Thank you very much. So thank you very much also for joining this uh, webinar. I hope that you can hear me clear and loud. Um, let me just share again my screen because I don't see it here. Well, now I see that it's sharing. Can you see my screen, right? Good. Okay, I'm going to check here the attendees. Everything looks fine here. Let me just check also questions and answers here. Okay, nothing's in there and uh, participants. Okay, now everything is prepared. So thank you very much for joining this call. Um, today we are going to do a quick discussion in this seminar or webinar about the software management um, and the relation between the, the managers and the real life. Um, my name is David Santana. Uh, I've been working with software for uh, many years, but basically in different uh, positions or roles. I studied my university uh, studies 18 years ago, uh, no, more than that, 20 years ago. Uh, but I started to, to work with software about 14 years ago. Uh, I, I had different positions, first as a tester, then I was designer, then I was programmist or programmer. Um, then I was team lead, then project manager and architect. So I've been in different roles and I was collecting information through all these projects that I have been. And uh, that's what I wanted to show you here. So perhaps it's not exactly as, uh, as, um, as we see usually in the theory or in the wonderful um, theoretical life, but it's more with the projects that I have collected during during these years. Um, also, this experience that I'm sharing here is, is, is not only my experience, it's also the points that I have discussed with my colleagues in all these projects. So usually um, we have also another webinars, but also sessions of um, retrospective meetings, etc. So with all my colleagues, we have collected some points that we want to discuss today and perhaps try to introduce you to a new topic if, if any of you are new to the software. Uh, industry that is this software management. Um, good. So the language, of course, English, because uh, we are from several, several, um, several different locations, and um, I think English is the most common language for IT. I, I think that we are going to try to cover the most important topics, but for me more than just presenting this PowerPoint is the ability to discuss with you and get your opinion about these topics. That's why uh, we are going to have a, a survey, uh, an assessment at the beginning of the, of the presentation to know what is your opinion about this topic, if you have any. And then we are going to assess exactly the same at the end of the presentation to see if uh, your opinion is still the same or, or it has changed a bit or in, in which direction. Um, it's not that complicated, it's basically two simple questions that we would like to introduce. But uh, before we start to do this poll, I would like to um, present expectations of this, uh, of this webinar, which is, I hope some interaction, I, I, I expect that whether you are a beginner or, or expert, or if you are just totally new to the software industry, or you are uh, already many years here, please, share your thoughts from the pragmatic or from the real life point of view. I have, I have seen many theories during my studies and I know how the software industry should work as we all know how the world should work and it's not working in the way that it should. Uh, so I would like to, you, you to be honest with, with, with us and share your, your feelings, your, um, your ideas about this. Uh, so have a critical mind and, and please participate and let us know uh, what information can you transmit. Uh, if you need me, then I'm in Facebook, uh, David Santana EU, or also in Twitter uh, to continue this conversation later, also in LinkedIn. Good, um, why I'm doing this, uh, I was working with Luxoft in the past uh, in, in different projects. So I have a good feeling with, uh, with Luxoft, we have worked in very interesting projects in the past. And I, as some of you may remember, I 
usually giving this webinar since 2014 uh, 15 um, this is the first time that we are doing that remotely so I, I think it's also very challenging for me today um, but the re main reason because we are doing that or because I'm doing that is because of this principle I think that if you just keep the knowledge for yourself uh, usually this is not that wise because then the replication of this knowledge is totally biased by you and also concentrated in you. I think that if you listen to something, you tend to forget that as, as if you only listen to this webinar without saying or actually doing no nothing after that. But if you listen and see, perhaps you have the, the ability to remember. So I will encourage you to please focus in this webinar. It's, it's not gonna be that long, if you have any other distractions there, uh, Instagram, WhatsApp, whatever that can distract you, please, I, I'm just begging you for at least give me 10 minutes of your attention to decide if, if this webinar, uh, it's worth it to fully focus on that. Um, then try to understand in your projects or if you are studying in your university studies or in the future or just try to simulate that. The, the reality of these software projects in your life to see if you can actually understand because listen and, and see a presentation is not the same as understand the topic. When you finally do that, uh, then you dominate the topic and then don't stop in that point because that point is just personal. It's, it's the, the next step is what is important for me and I, I think it should be important for you and it's what, when you finally know, share it and, and, and project it. Okay, so now we can start with the poll. Um, I don't know if you still uh, can you help me with that or how can I activate the poll here? Hello? Um in the menu below you have yep. the next Q and A session. Ah yes, 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 I see it. Good. Ah okay, I see it. So here is the first question is uh, do you think software managers, and, um, not in the theoretical point of view, but in what you see in the real life, are really needed? Uh, so we have some ranges here, four ranges here, and we would like that you um, answer which ranges are the appropriate for you. This is question number one. And the question number two is, do you think that a technical team uh, can develop a self-organized space, efficient communication, uh, I mean, inside and outside the, the, the organization, so with the stakeholders and so on, and achieve the project success, success or results by, by themselves, like a technical team can develop that ability. Um, yeah. So let's wait for your voting. Ah, oh, thank you, you're starting the voting. Good. Good, uh, let's keep 30 more seconds. Good, so we have um, already 70% of the people have votes, so let's give 10 more seconds and then we can continue.
Good, so let's finish the poll now. Um, in polling. Okay, and I'm going to share the results with you. So here is what we have at the beginning of the conference. Um, to the first question, the most uh, voted one is highly needed, not only for admin, but for project management. And for the second one is highly possible that the team, technical team can develop a self-organized space, efficient communication inside and outside and achieve the recent project by themselves. So if you see these two questions are related. Um, they're not necessarily the same question, but they are highly related. And we will see that after the end of the conference, how, how it will go. Let me just save here that information and let's continue. Let's move here. Good. So let's start. So the first thing that we need to clarify here is that uh, we need to be sure that we all have different perspectives. Although we are talking about the same reality, it doesn't mean that we have a uh, true answer and the others not, it means that we are just seeing from one or two or different uh, point of views, the same reality. So please be aware that we all can be discussing about the same things and perhaps in not all of the, your projects happen exactly the same things, but I'm talking about the majority of projects that I have been, this, uh, this is, these are the collections of information that I have gathered. Good, the first thing is, is this one. Um, Perhaps some of you have seen this um, cartoon, let's say, or this, yeah, this image in the past. In most of the projects, you can reflect some or yeah, the majority of, of these uh, stages in your own project. So it means that it's not only the perception of my colleagues or my projects or the projects that I have been involved in, but also many other projects are having issues either in uh, scheduling or planning or execution or cost or any other. And we will see that this is not only about the software reality, but it's going to imply that it's also in the software reality. Uh, so this is common to all kind of projects, including software projects, and we are going to see why. Uh, so the discussion starts in the way that why we think that the software projects are not being successful or why the, the success rate of the project, software projects are not that high. So this was the first question that I started to do when I was uh, studying and perhaps one of the reasons because I decided to take so different roles to try to understand from different perspective of the software industry why this was happening. And the first thing that we need to clarify here is that the software project management is not another project management. So it's not that generic project management. That was the first mistake that I was doing and my colleagues as well, is that we thought, okay, uh, this is just like any other, um, it's like any other software or project industry, sorry. So we have the same phases and, uh, and uh, yeah, we have like uh, in, inputs, materials, outputs. So yeah, it's the same. So if the other projects are not failing, why is our project failing? But we realize that actually the software project has a extra variant, let's say, that is the art or artistic variant. It means that in many other project management, uh, we have more science, so it's more replicable. So you can uh, copy patterns and the structures are more precise and we are constrained by, by the physics law, uh, let's say, if you are going to build, um, I don't know, a house, then you will need, I don't know, 3000 bricks. But if you need a, co a condominium or a many sets of house, then you can calculate exactly how many bricks more do you need, extrapolating that information. Also, you know that you cannot put infinite bricks because it's not possible to get the materials and this kind of considerations. But in software, many things are intangible. So you can actually import one library on 10,000 million libraries and your software can manage to do that. So the limitations are way less, but also the way that we produce software is a bit more different. We also depend on the art, on the concentration of the programmer, 
on the um, see that the programmer or, and the developer and the, the technical team see the things how how they approach the solution because sometimes not the same approach I mean, sometimes the same solution has different approaches uh, or there are different approaches for one problem so here is the first problem that we are going to find in software project management and is the artistic part if you have an artistic part inside of your project is going to be very difficult for you to pressure or schedule or estimate artistic results it's like to put together 10 artists and say okay i need a masterpiece every three days okay see you next week because you cannot just push that perhaps they can just need 10 minutes of inspiration to produce 100 masterpieces but perhaps they can be trapped in that room 10 years in a row and produce none. That's, that's the problem with the, with the art, let's say, when you are talking about management. Um, so we need to have a concise or a summary of what happened in the software industry for those that are new, perhaps this uh, is going to surprise you, but for those that are already working in the software industry, you will perhaps find yourself here very well identified. The software industry is not that as beauty as many people believe that uh, everything is so happy and then we are just sitting together smiling in our laptops or computers and working just that six, seven hours and then going home very happy. Sometimes we need to uh, stress ourselves, stress our brains, be constantly updated. There are a lot of things that happen here, but I'm just going to focus in two factors. Uh, the first one is the impact of the software and the second uh, in the in the industries um, and the second is the way that we understand the roles of software so the first one came or was first analyzed in 1979 um, by the Standish group and they realized in that time that there was a software crisis I have some questions here I will reply the questions as soon as we finish the section number one but keep posting your, your questions. Okay, so the software crisis was uh, identified in, 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 in that time as a problem with these kind of projects that they were not delivering 100% of success results all the time. So they were thinking, what is wrong with this project that we all the time need to put extra money or rearrange the scope drastically or the software is not being used properly or not at all. What, what is happening? And then they, they did this study and then they realized that only 7% of the projects, and all, only 7% of the budget, of the schedule, of the resources, of everything that they planned was correct. Like, as they say, if they say this software is 1 million euros and 10, 10 months, 10 people, only 7% was correct. The only 93% were wrong. Uh, and this is a huge problem if, if you're thinking about that each project can be millions of millions of euros, then you can see that 93% of the time you are not having the maximum value of this money, people, time, etc. They realize also that uh, we will have a problem here in delivering the software in very different factors. In 1979, they realized that actually many customers were accepting the software even with changes in the three percent or uh, they put some extra effort and they say yeah let's 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 commit to this extra functionality in order to start to use the software or let's put a bit more money or let's hire one or two three people more you know they need to adjust uh, the project in order to make that at least usable. So that was a 90%, 19%, sorry. So as you can see here, the big percentage is, is paid but never delivered or delivered but never used, which means for me and for my colleagues, that was a huge frustration. Not only because perhaps we will have problems with payment, because usually this, this is not the problem. Uh, the industry has tends to get a lot of money, but I mean, it's very sad when you work in a project uh, in a project for two or three years. At the end, you finish the project, and the customer say, "No, um, all the modules are not complete, and we need to cancel that." Or, "Yeah, everything was okay, but 
I have found a new software that is doing that and I'm going to use that or or even worse, they just cancel that and then two years of development were just stop it abruptly. But then it's got, that was 1979. Um, but no, in 2019, the percentage has not changed that much. So we were thinking, yeah, okay, 1979, you know, they don't have the technology that we have today, the smart people we have today and so, and so on and so forth. But in 2019, the same study reveals that the completion of success uh, for these projects is still 10%. Okay, it's, it's a bit better than the 7% before. But if you see the, the, the challenge or those projects that are, ha are having a lot of um, um, variants or modifications in order to make it usable at least is still super high, like 52% are still challenged. And this is even worse, still almost 40% of the projects are failing, which means, uh, Many people can be frustrated, not only customers and companies, but also we as a, a technical or manager or, or roles involved in that software industry. So what what were the causes identified in that time and also in, I mean, in 79 and in 2019? The first cause or, or these causes are unreal estimations. As I present to you, the software as per se is not that easy to estimate. You cannot say like, yeah, okay, if one house is uh, 300 bricks, then 10 houses are 3,000. And if one house is 10 um, developers or constructor or workers, then uh, 10 houses is 100 or something like that. So it's very difficult to estimate. The second is that the plans are not real. So usually the plans are like, we don't know how to estimate and the customer also has no idea. Then we just put some boundaries and then we both lie. So the customer says, oh, okay, I need, I'm whatever industry, I'm a um, parking system. I need a software for uh, control my parking system and the reservation of, and the places and stuff. So I need that for the end of this year because I'm going to change my administration and because another uh, com competency or concurrency are coming. Uh, so I have, I don't know, 1 million euros for that. And uh, yeah, and only have six months because the end of the year is almost there. So how does it work? They go to the market and they say, okay, hi, I have 1 million euros and six months and I need this system. I still don't know exactly what I need for this system, but I know that I need to automatize or, or put in some computers the information of parking place who can help me and then many companies say yes me me you know uh, 1 million euros we all need 1 million euros right so then they they get the project and then they go to the manager or whatever whoever is estimating that and say can we do that and the manager say yeah 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 of course because i i need to work you all need to work so and we need the money so let's gather that money then the plans start in this unreal way because it's then you i'm going to create a schedule uh um I don't know, um, Gantt schedule or whatever, and say, okay, so six months. And then I'm going to split the phases of the software development lifecycle in six months. And then I'm going to hire uh, as many programmers as I have with 1 million euros minus the profit of the company. And then that's the project estimation. And if you can see, this is a bit strange way to start the planning phase of the software and one, one of the principal factors of this software crisis. So it's also not able to foresee, even, even if you have the chance, which not many companies have, to say, okay, uh, these are my requirements. I don't understand very well my requirements. Help me to understand my requirements. And then after that, we can see how much money do we need and how much time do we need. Even if we had that chance, which is very rare, but even if we have that chance, it's not that easy to foresee how much do I need in all the restrictions? So cost, um, quality, time, etc. So even if someone say, okay, no worries. I'm the same parking system. Um, I still don't know how much money do I have to put, but I'm going to tell you my requirements and then you can tell me how much money and how much time do you need. It's very difficult to do it. 
and the, the, the fourth reason is not so obvious because it's very specific for the software projects. Perhaps the other industries are related with some of the other industries, but this, this one, architectural break, is something that it's funny, but it only happens in software projects as far as I know. Um, is, the, is this chance to destroy totally the architecture or the um, loss of the software industry in your organization with money. It means you say, okay, I'm going to create a website and this is going to be the technology and the, I'm going to put here some standalone or whatever. You decide the, any architecture and then in the middle of the project, the, the, the customer say, yeah, but I would like that to have like a robot, you know, like a physical robot, like Asimo or something like that to do that part of the parking places assignation. And I don't know that perhaps some uh, robot also be in the entrance of the parking place and communicate with me, my system and so on. And because of that, then, you know, these diagrams in your architecture needs to change of technology and perhaps not monolithic, but microservices or even worse, perhaps not microservices, but monolithic, you know, and you say, no, I cannot do that. And they say, oh, you know, take more money here and then everything is solved. So it's the same like if you have a, I don't know, a woman and say, okay, instead of delivering me the baby in nine months, deliver me in two. You know, you cannot put just money in that uh, because it's, these are like the rules of the process, you know. So architectural decisions are these high level decisions that influence the whole construction of the software. And many, many times we will see in projects that these architecture decisions are either not follow or they are suggested to change drastically because of money. So it's like, um, yeah, we know that you need to deliver that, but you know, I, I, I'm in a hurry, I need to deliver three months before and I don't need to deliver any more standalone, but in a mobile, so please, here is another 50 grants and just do it. So this is a problem that we have identified, complexity, lack of engineering, this is even more serious, that difficult to explain here. I, I will come to that later. Zero defects impossibility is like, in the past, if you check, um, the software was not that complex and the people creating the software um, didn't need to understand thousands of libraries and technologies because if you go to 1960s, for example, there were not so many programming languages, tools, frameworks, and flavors to learn. So many people, especially techie people, can focus for 10 years or, or something like that in two or three specific programming languages and libraries and really be good at it. And then they can design for, for in a very focused way for, for many, many years and be able to guarantee that when they release, they were, you cannot find bugs, at least not in the, not in the way that the test cases they use proof. This impossibility in 2020 is huge. Like today is not that easy to make software totally zero defect. Actually, no one is trying to focus on zero defects anymore. We are doing this beta testing and it's like put in production something that is somehow useful, minimum valuable product with thousands of bugs that we still have no idea what are they. Uh, perhaps our test cases are also very weak and we accept already that we are never going to have a perfect solution. So let's keep moving. So this zero defects was possible in the past. If you go, for example, to Apollo configuration software, or when you, we, we went to the moon, you will see that they actually create thousands of test cases and they had uh, ways to prove that no box were present in those configuration, at least based on the test cases. Today, we are not using that and also this is making a huge impact in the project management. Um, okay. Let's skip this part. This is the part of the architecture that I explained you before. The early decisions of architecture are the most important ones. So most of the time, from the technical point of view, the selection of the right architecture is the key of the success or of the failure of the project, because this is something that you just cannot change with the time. You can actually change some code you're not using the library perhaps too well or something. 
uh, so you can change the code and it's the impact of course is is, is important uh, you have to rewrite some code uh, use more hours from some developers etc but it's not that huge but when you change something in the architecture you impact the design implementation and code so perhaps not even the library code is not used anymore but not even the library of the language or yeah the way that you create the software perhaps you need even totally different set of people to create the new architecture so these are the problems of the software industry um to go into our detail uh into our scope conversation i'm going to assume or i'm going to create a fake company so i'm not need to talk about any of my projects directly and also not to talk about any of your projects we can just assume that we have a company here that is highly impacted by software which could be whatever company because today most of the companies are highly impacted by software in one way or another but we will have a software company that is called ACME. For this purpose, ACME is going to be a European Union company. Um, let's say that we create software custom made. And we are going to split the company roles in just two big categories because we don't have so much time today to, to describe each role of the software project. Um, yeah. So we are going to find two types of people because they have super different level of communication. One is business people and the other is techie people. So business people are usually the customer, which is usually seen as the king. So it's basically the person that is sponsoring, paying and giving the requirements. Notice, notice that these are roles, not one per particular person, but it could be a, a company or a group of people. Also those are roles, one person could be executing as customer but at the same time as architect and sending guidelines to the techie so at the same time it's techie from the outside organization but uh, we will have here in the in these categories three type of people customers head or executives the people that are actually finding the business uh, talking with other companies and bringing the the possible project here and the project manager uh, the project manager um I'm gonna say he or she, so I'm going to put just this guy here, uh, this doc here. So project manager, regular project manager is boss. And from the technical perspective, we have the developers, programmer, tester, etc. No more description on the roles, but uh, if you go to any of my other webinars, or I mean in the future because to any of my other uh, seminars usually um, in place, then you will see that we have distinction of all these roles. Good, so business heads and the manager. So here is the first question of, of today and is what is a software manager? Why, why, why not just a project manager? Why, why I'm not just talking about a project manager? If I hire a person that is a generic manager, so whatever project manager from whatever industry, so a Baker industry, project management from Baker industry, or project management from construction industry or tax industry. Why a regular project manager is not usually in software projects, so or should be. So this person here, this dog is called boss. And our question in ACME is boss skills are enough for our software concerns. And then we will see in order to compare boss with uh, with what we are trying to do is boss is a certified manager so he's a manager that came from any other industry not non-software industry let's say but he is still certified in project management he has studied project management he matched the profile that we put in our uh, career description in linkedin or whatever he has experience in other industries so he, he is a good manager in the other industry. The question is, is that enough for our projects or not? So one of the features that this uh, manager has is that he is empowered as the boss. So it means the heads here in the roles, these, these guys said, okay, you are the boss and I'm going to give you full power over the team. So the feature that is that he can use this power he used to follow the BOB and hype. This is also another of the conference that we have done. This best of breed and hype uh, tendencies or trends. 
So it means that Ball says, okay, if something is executed by many other projects, it must be good because uh, that's why many projects are doing that. So if many people are using Scrum, then Scrum is, is for my team. It doesn't matter if it's actually or not for my team. I mean, it, we analyze actually the, the impact of a Scrum or not, but I have seen that all my other colleagues are doing a Scrum, so I'm doing a Scrum. So let's say that he used to follow the hype. Uh, he has no technical background. Uh, he thinks that all the projects are projects anyway, so if I manage one project of bakery, one project of construction, then why not have one project of software? He thinks more uh, tailor way. Uh, it means time of movement, time and movement. It means I have some specific roles, some specific time, and I can just make use of them as as, as resources, as bricks, as uh, metal, as you know, tools. Um, and he's hierarchy oriented. It means the typical I'm the boss, you team are the you know the subordinate. So I say what you have to do, and you just obey. And um, also another peculiarity or particularity or characteristic of this boss is that he does not believe that much in things that are not code. So if you are doing something that is not code in a software firma, then boss is thinking more or less that you're just wasting a bit of resources. So if you're saying now, I'm trying to compare two libraries because perhaps it's going to increase the speed of the software in 70% uh, he said but it's working with the first library yes so keep the first library and keep coding or or software architecture if you explain no oh, we are creating here the software architectural document um, and we have some concerns about the non requirement non functional requirement requirements or something like that he said yeah yeah but you know, try to finish that document soon because it's one of the deliverables or milestones that we have promised to the customer and let's return to work in the real work or let's keep working useful tasks. Good. Um, Boss is digitally illiterate. It means he's he's not in our industry, in the software industry. So you are not going to tell Boss about microservices, about uh, TensorFlow, about uh, C Sharp, Java, those are like totally unknown words for him. He's more oriented to police, police style. So it means that uh, I need to be in front of my people to see that they are actually working. And also he thinks that the resources are perfectly interchangeable. It means I have three here, three Java developers. So when I need another project, I just can hire one Java developer and send this one there. And then when I need another one, I just can exchange, you know, like, when you're playing poker or roomy queue or something like that. If I have the tree red, the red is the same everywhere. So, and the last feature of both is that the main or perhaps only tools that he's using is a lot of email and Excel with no macros. All in the world is email, 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 email. Good. Um, so again, this is just, uh, hypothetical situation of this Acme firma, I know that perhaps is uh, not similar at all to what happened in reality. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Um, but but this is basically um, one of the features that we are putting here into BOSS because we need to discuss if actually BOSS is good or not for the software uh, industry. Um, good. But he's not an incompetent manager, so he's effective. He has been successful with the other projects in the other industries, so he's he's good manager anywhere. Um, he's working the legal concern, um, respecting the norms, an average worker. So let's start with the perception of the um, of the business roles about boss. So. Why the business roles are interested in hiring a manager? So here we start to demystify uh, why the software industry needs a manager. So the first reason is because it's not that intuitive. Actually, a manager is not needed if this will just uh, put more uh, cost inside of my project. As an executive, as, as an owner of the owner of uh, Acme. I need to think clearly if I really need a manager because this is an extra cost. 
So I don't want to put more costs in my project because I want to amplify or increase my profit. So my perception to bring a manager is because actually I'm finding some, I, I am having some uh, findings that are negative for my project or my company. So here for ACME, this perception is that there is no accountability in the project. So I have a lot of techies, uh, a technical team, but no one is accountable for each particular uh, module requirement, a conversation with the customer, etc. So it's out of control in that case. There are poor communication with the team. Each person is really good and capable of doing things, but they are not talking almost at all between themselves and the project is also going nowhere. Um, I think these are a waste of time because I have 20, 10, 20 or 30 techies seated together in a room or, or distributed, I don't know. But as I'm not clear with the requirements and there is no one accountable and they don't communicate that much, then they are just wasting time and I'm just paying salary. So I feel that this is a waste of time. Um, the quality of the modules um, and the quality of the software delivery is a concern. So my customer is telling me that I'm always delayed uh, in the software modules, but also the software modules have a lot of bugs. It's not what they expect. They think that perhaps they have gathered non so professional resources, although they can change over and over and over and notice that this is not the case. They have no performance control, compliance, milestone, and they feel, think that in general, the project is very, has a very negative environment. So the people are not very happy. They are not delivering on time. If I push them, they are not that happy. And one of the things that happen in, in IT, even, more before the coronavirus is that we have a lot of places or positions, job positions. So if you push that much, the technical people, the technical people can easily migrate to other projects. Good, these are the perception of business regarding the boss. Now let's see the perception of the roles techies. So the technical team or programmers, developers, architectures, etc., architects, etc. So they think about the boss when he joined. The first perception is, oh, this guy is some old school tool guy. He cannot replicate these uh, tasks. He wastes my productive time because he's always calling me to stupid meetings or um, he does not understand what I'm saying. So if I say, oh, I have a problem with my IDE or um, my database connector is blah, 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 then I feel like a, like a techie that I'm losing all this time because anyway, he's understanding blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So these are the perception of techies about boss, meetings and meetings, the guy that is meetings and meetings and meetings means just wasting of collective time. Um, and he always knows best. So as, as he is very hierarchical oriented, then he thinks, um, yeah, I'm ordering, you follow. So I know exactly what is the best choice to do, what is the best model to start, when do you have to deliver, why the estimation of this module should be one week. Either I don't know about technical things. Um, also, the, the techies perceive that the boss is all the time in their shoulders, like seeing actually if they are working. They feel even bad when they are compiling software <clears throat> or running. Um, the Jenkins or, you know, when they are not typing, they feel a bit stressed when boss is there because he, he's going to start to look at them like, what are you doing? Um, and also another perception is that boss put on them many tasks in parallel most of the time. Uh, purge this, create this repo, and deliver this, adjust the graphical interface, this, this, this. And then he starts to say, hey, why you are delaying this and that and that. And then when you ask, oh, but which one is the most important task? All are important. All have the highest priority. And remember when there are a lot of highest priority in tasks, nothing has priority. And you know, high, high pressure and real schedules. Okay, uh, it seems that tomorrow is the deadline for this. So we need to deliver this module that we are delayed one month in two days. So keep going guys. So these are the perception of the techies about the, the generic manager. Mm, spam, email spam, uh, difficult to device story points. Uh, so 
of course it's difficult he doesn't know about the technical stuff um, and when you are giving a status about the task boss thinks that 80 percent of progress means over so when you're saying in the meeting at the beginning of the day okay how how you are doing with the database um, structure or population or whatever bosses uh, um you said 80 percent i guess okay so it's almost done so for tomorrow you're going to start a, a new task because 80 percent it means it's over we will see later that 80 percent can be eternal 80 percent but this is another topic um okay so the, the discussion here is should we fire the manager or not and that's the first section of the of our webinar just put you in context before we start the the nice conversation about this and start to discover what should be our direction or what 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 is my my direction i'm going to read some questions before to start this second section to see that we are aligned that you can hear me well and what do you think about that if acme somehow reflects something in your life or is totally out of uh, the reality of your projects let me check and then questions and answers sorry good here mm -hmm. boom i would like to know if it's possible to have blah 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 remote position i don't understand this question Okay, here is one question that I understand. How to estimate the task if not all requirements are given? Waterfall development, not an option. Okay, uh, we will go that, to that later. So let's keep this mark. The other are not related with the webinar. Yes, the webinar is recorded. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give more webinars. Um, hello, hello, I have a lot of hellos, I'd like to know. If it's possible to have a remote position from this project, I don't understand that question. If you can elaborate more about this, I will try to reply later. Okay, so let's return to ACME. So the first thing that we have collected during my, my um, professional lifetime is that it's important to have a plan. So I'm going to put you some analogies to, to see why management is important. And those are not that obvious, but with the analogies, could be perhaps. The first one is the analogy of security. Usually when you see security in a secure place, you always think, oh, the company is spending a lot of money in these guys or systems or guys and systems, but nothing is happening here. So usually when that happens is because actually the security is working. So when you start to notice that perhaps it's a waste of money, Perhaps it's because they are working well that looks secure. You know, it, it's you. You will notice that it's very difficult here in Europe. But if you go outside, um, you will notice that the places with high violence, they don't have uh, good security infrastructure, personnel, or tools. And you will notice and feel insecure, and then you will say, "Oh, why they don't hire some security?" So. Usually in the industry of software, you will see that when a manage when the management is is corrected, executed in the project, then no one notices the management anymore because the technical people are um, well articulated. They are always busy with the right tasks, and the customer is receiving on time the information. So you actually start to think, "Wow, um, why we are having management? Everything." seems to be so articulated by itself that or we should we could just fire the manager at the moment or that or the management um process right now because everything now is going smoothly so this is the first analogy the second analogy is the analogy of um of coaches so if you watch football if either you are a fan or not you will realize that there are some people playing the field not usually 11 but there are also some people outside the field why the company the companies why the teams or the clubs are spending so much money paying these guys 
to coach a team if they are actually not touching the ball, not making any goal, not scoring anything. Perhaps they are old, even if you put them into play, perhaps they cannot move that fast or kick that strong or precise, etc. So management and managers will see uh, or will have this relation also with the team. They can coach the team. And that's the first consideration that we should think about managers. It's not about that they come from other industry or not, or yeah, it's, it is in somehow, but it's also about how they see their resources. So the pure hierarchy, hierarchical approach, master slave, let's say, it's going to be a problem. The, the best way to do it perhaps for what I have seen, uh, what my colleagues have uh, seen also is a coach approach. If you are doing well, your coaching, then no one is talking about the coach, but you are there. And perhaps if you see, for example, here, uh, Pep Guardiola, Ferguson and others, they have accomplished many, many things guiding the team. The team. Perhaps they were also part of teams in the past, but they, they are um, part of the success of the team anyway. You have seen many times that even the same teams with different coaches are failing. So it's not only about, or yeah, it's not only about the resources you have. So you can have the same group of techies and in two different projects perform totally different. One performance of 100% and the other of 30%. Same team, same capabilities, same knowledge, because it's, those are the same people, right? And you will notice that with the bad or good guidance of management, they will perform totally different. The, the projects change a lot. You, you will see that in the coach analogy. The third one is automation. Many think, or many people think, oh, automation, yeah, this is something that is going to happen in the, let's say, long-term future and for the people that are, you know, picking stuffs with the hands or, you know, delivering something or in the receptionist or something like that, in the reception or something, but this is not gonna happen in the high level roles like management and then we will see later what is going on so okay here how we are time good so we will see that first thing that we need to do to guarantee a good software management in our project is not about boss so we focus too much in boss and we think ah the problem is boss uh, because he he is all of that we have described before but the problem is actually the lack of a software management platform for boss. So the management is not about a person. The management is about a set of tools, a process, a framework, a platform, and some roles guiding or coordinating these platforms. The software of the future will be written based on that. So we imagine for a second, we will see later this imagination is more, real than we expected but imagine for a second that we can have a platform to automate automat, automatize these requirements life cycle crystal method knowledge profile task distribution control monitoring etc so what happens if we can at least partially automate part of the life cycle of software at least partially for example the scope definition for example what we have discussing in the in the chat before um the way that we estimate the tasks, if not all requirements are given. Uh, if should, we should use uh, waterfall or agile, which kind of agile, XP or crystal or scrum, uh, what kind of representation, uh, Kanban, etc. What if we can have a framework that automate not only this decision, but the way that we process this information, for example, if we decide Agile, um, or if this software or platform decides Agile, that the platform creates the whole, the, yeah, the whole structure for 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 Scrum. They decide the technologies for the user story, epics, the way that communicate with the developers, etc. <clears throat> so, if we focus, for example, in the Crystal method and automate and we are able to automate this uh, life cycle, we should focus in close communications, technical environment, often delivery, autonomy, the, the 
focus of the people, the access to expert, etc. So imagine that due to this platform, my techies can communicate to each other more um, effectively, more close. So I give, or this platform gives to my technical team tools to communicate, let create channels in Slack, create automatically some repos in Dropbox or Google Drive, automatically assign the, I don't know, some Jira or Trello or whatever um, tasks and communicate through the Slack channel and assign to my team. So I create the technical environment for that. I, I mean the platform. Then I automate this often delivery so I don't need to wait for all my techies to finish at one specific point. Each time that they are committing the changes, I can start a often delivery. Um, I, I can start a delivery of, of the software. So I can say, for example, not instead of uh, we see together at the end of July um, and integrate all the changes, all the time that you are um, committing information, you can have uh, a test of your software immediately, a beta session of that. Um, I can run all the tests integrated. Um, yeah, so imagine a platform that do that, um, that allows you to be focused, that says, okay, in this moment, your developer is doing this and that particular task, so he needs to communicate with this um, developer of the com of the customer side, he needs access to this system at this particular hour, and they need uh, around uh, eight hours to finish that task. So in the next eight hours, do not bring his or her to any meeting or put in any other parallel task, like for example, Pomidor technique or something like that. So if we develop a platform that allows us to automate part of this, uh, life cycle, for example, in agile methodology that is so popular today, then we will have a platform of management that facilitate us the evaluation and processes of software construction, for example, suggest optimizations, um, apply designs, create beta testings, uh, monitoring the, the, the technical people and see what, when, and how are, are they working. And you can cross that with other areas of your organization, not only your project. You can you can change uh, or you can process two, three, four projects at the same time and say, okay, we need backups for the backend person. So um, our backend person, Anna, is having um, a new module in Postgres or in Oracle, whatever. But what happened if Anna is sick or she is transferred to another project or she just get another job offer, who is the backup? I can automate the, this. Um, I can cross this information of the process, organizational process and see how they are um, transversal related with um, the software requirements, which is one of the questions that you are seeing here. Someone asked me how to estimate the task if not all requirements are given, usually, not all requirements are given, but you understand, or you have to understand all the epics, all the most important or priority epics at the beginning of your project. Because remember the plan at the beginning is fundamental. Even if not all requirements are detailed, if you have the epics and you can cross them with the process, business process of the customer, you can see the impact of them and then you can start the development of a specific module and iterate in the detailing of each specific user story, if we are talking here about Agile. Waterfall is not a discussion for today, but you will see that Waterfall is not that popular today. And also the um, Waterfall does not apply in many of the situations, but it applies in some of the situations. We will not discuss that today. But this framework that I'm proposing here should be able to decide for us or suggest for our management group, which approach to use. So what if we could have uh, this platform and create a pool of developers, let's say a pool of freelancers. 
and say, okay, I'm going to assemble inside of my organization a pool of free, uh, a pool of developers or outside the organization, I'm going to hire some freelancers and I'm going to com put to compete some uh, uh, techies for the same requirement or for the same functionality or for the same module at the beginning to see who is most who is more efficient and then i can replace them in the future i can for example based on this pool of developers i can calculate the duration of the next projects so perhaps in this project today i'm going to do some rough estimation and say okay based on our knowledge and the, in the iterations that we have done the module of the database uh, cost three months of development of two people or whatever but with that knowledge the software that i'm proposing here can calculate for another project with similar requirements okay if the requirements are so similar then it should be also three three months and then you start to have some comparisons but this that i'm proposing here is not doing by boss even if boss is super technical what i'm proposing here is that the platform is doing that for boss or for the, for the technical roles. The technical roles need to know how to manage and configure this platform and use that platform to then focus in what is important and is coaching the team. But all these extrapolation calculations, the burn down chart performance and so on should be done by a platform, a machine, not by a person. So again, if we, put in the shoes of this platform, the platform can calculate automatically the budget of the project based on everything. If this platform controls the salaries of the developers, of the testers, managers, if this platform control the license of the software that we are using to develop our software, um, the place that we are renting or the space, workspace, we are renting the internet, the electricity, uh, plus the estimations, I can all the time calculate the budget to the date for the project. And this is done by the platform. Or imagine that this platform helps to assemble this team of freelancers through the internet based on the skill sets. And in the future, when you have more detailed requirements with specific formats, let's say, okay, not C set language or something like that, but more defined like uh, this is backend task, this is backend task based on a form, based on this specific architecture. And when you have more detail, detailed requirements, then you cannot automate also the split of tasks and automatically decide which tasks are given to which workers or to which techies. You, can, you I mean, the platform can decide, okay, I'm going to split this uh created the database in three modules and the first module is going to be assigned to this developer in the pool the second to this and the third one to this so you can assign that and you can also replicate that okay i'm going to assign this to two people i'm going to put them to compete at the beginning it, it looked like or at the beginning it's going to be more expensive for me because i'm going to keep two people running um but if i assemble a team of freelancers it will be a bit cheaper and also if i assemble a team of freelancers per objective i could i could just pay the first one or something like that so if you can um put inside of this platform and monitor and quality check for example um the, the platform could check the quality of the code and you can say how you can read the code you don't need to but each time that the that the developer is committing code you can run the whole continuous integration, continuous delivering, and see how much errors is producing each time, how often is delivering, but with which quality. And if you keep the track in the future, you can decide there was a bug in this functionality that any of the test or any of the tests saw, but three months later, the customer, um, how to say that, mentioned or registered, yeah. And uh, I can track this bug in one particular piece of code of one particular developer. So I can monitor quality even in the future. I mean, even, even in the time, sorry. And then based on that, I can assign some uh, points. So I can use some gamification and say, okay, this developer is better in this kind of task than this one. This is a good backup for this one. Um, 
I can automatically create report uh, team reports for efficiency, performance, calculate the burn down chart, and the manager will focus then in use this. With the time in this framework, I can do some copycat approach. It means analyze what the developers are doing in different projects and start to see what are the patterns in the jobs in the, in the task descriptions. I can see, okay, all the time that they create a database and when the task is related with Oracle and when the task is based on forms or a, a structured data, they start to do this and that and create a connector and they install this software and then they create some tables with this notation, create table, blah, blah, blah. So I can automate all of that next time for my developer. And as a copycat, I can use the best examples of code of other developers. Next time that I assign these tasks to another developer, I can provide him all these templates. So I can say, dear Carlos or dear Anna, here is the task to populate the database. Based on other projects, you could use this and that and this tool, SQL developer or whatever. Here is the link. We have this license. Um, uh, the syntax use is SQL 99 in those projects that we have analyzed. Here is the syntaxes. Here is an example of the, or extra of code. How can you create these tables? Actually, based on the requirements that I have read, there are five entities. Here is a template of the, or uh, empty template of, of the tables. Perhaps this could help you. And then the task will be delivered with more context. The developer, of course, will decide, I'm not going to use any of that, or I'm going to. But the copycat part of the platform will say, or oh, save a lot of time for the for these techies. Then it can learn if this um, hints or help delivered to the techies is useful by the way that they are using and monitoring with the time more and more projects and see, okay, this is useful, this is not useful. I can split this task. Actually, I can split part of this task that I have seen that 100% of the times they use my hints into tasks that are not performed by humans, but performed by me as a machine. So if all the time they need to create a table space at the beginning and they all accept my suggestion of creating a table space, then I'm going to create a table space for them instead of assign that. So the, the platform can actually monitor, learn, and replace many of the tasks, many of the developers, many of the roles, depending or moving at least across the, the teams. Good. And also then the platform can create a dynamic directory with the gamification points to see which is the best role in which project. Perhaps uh, Maria is not that great creating uh, graphical interfaces or not so good with CSS, although she knows how to do it. But when I compare the performance of Maria with Anna, Anna is very good with CSS. But Maria is better when she's trying to do, when she's doing web services and the efficiency is higher in this. So I can calculate what is the best position of, of each specific role inside of my team. Also, I can see, Maria is super good with structured, structured data, but when we are doing some uh, Cassandra or some non-structured data approaches, then she's having a lot of problems. So perhaps I can register Maria into some uh, courses or I can, uh, yeah, register her in some webinars or I can actually create meetings with the architects of the organization uh, where I can involve for a specific topics, specific users and analyze who is accessing what. Um, what is the, oh, why this is, okay. What is the risk in each of the projects and recalculate the plan all the time, which is very important because the plan is always evolving. So one of the first limitations that we are going to find in generic project management is that the plan is unique and immutable and this is, totally false in software industry. The first plan that you create the first day is not the same plan that you deliver at the end of the project. The plan is always moving each day with each change that is happening in the software, either customer, technological, 
human perspective by your roles, uh, I don't know, constraints like COVID, etc. Anyway, the plan is always automatically updated. And this is not a task that the manager should be doing anymore. This should be on the platform and the manager should be just checking that the simulations created, that the plan updated by the machine is correct or not. And perhaps adjust the plan, but not create. Because today, the big problem that we are having is that the managers are doing this platform because this platform, we thought that is not possible or it does not exist. All that I have said, perhaps in, in your minds is like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever, perhaps in 2100 or yeah, but anyway, in my organization, at least it's not going to happen because this is so much artificial intelligence, machine learning, futuristic. First, they are going to replace other kind of roles. But the good news here is that these platforms, perhaps as a, as a platforms, don't exist yet, but most of these individual um, functionalities that I have said for this platform are already in progress. For example, if we think about the the issue that I'm committing some code and the code is starting is, um, automatically starts a process to test and deploy. This is already exists. Um, assigning some people due to the skills already exists. Analyze the code quality already exists. Update the, the schedule based on the, for example, the update of Jira. I can update the MPP file. This already exists. So I can create this uh, simulation and decisions actually with software also. I can compare and project. Let's assume this team, let's assume these requirements. Compare with the initial requirements and let's simulate Monte Carlo, what should be the result if all the variables that I know keep in that place. And then I can just have this uh, information. We can actually today create these gamification models we can actually rank our developers in that way. We can um, suggest, for example, uh, more trainings for a specific roles based on the game points, uh, increase salaries and a percentage based on this gamification. So you can actually encourage positively this. And actually, there is a platform that is trying to do this. If you check in these links that I'm putting here, you will see that this is not science fiction. There are some projects that are already started to do this. As you can see here, example here in the LinkedIn or in this automation, Kurgesak, you will see that the managers per se, the role should change a lot because we are not going to need a person doing what this kind of calculations. The manager should be more like the coaches, the security analogy, the this approach that is more like helping to the technical people to coordinate is a person or a you know, set of people fulfilling a role that is management role that use this platform to make the most efficient way, the, the, to make the team the most efficient uh, possible, uh, or make them uh, Air Force more optimal, let's say. Good, so let's come to the questions. With that, I finished the section number two. Um, and then we can create, do our poll again. Uh, let's see, here in questions. Did you take into your consideration the characters, character differences and culture? Because it always affect people behavior? Yes, um, that's a good question. Um, the question is, do you take consideration of the other characters, differences, and culture? It's not the same to create software in a software firma than in a automobile firma who has an IT department. Also, it's not the same a big company or a medium company. Also, it's not the same if it's in Latin America or if it's in North America or if it's in Europe or if it's in Asia. It's not the same if it's our, or most of our techies are um, I don't know, AS400 oriented with the average age of 55 uh, years old than, uh, I don't know, Go or 
something very new oriented and um, the average age is 22. Of course, these considerations are very difficult to have. Fortunately, this material that I'm presenting here is based on different configurations. Um, I, I don't know if I mentioned at the beginning, but I had the opportunity to work in different roles, which is good for the sake of these considerations. But also I, I was working in North America, in Latin America and in Europe, not only in software firmas, but also in, uh, in non-software firmas. So I was also working, for example, in banking company, uh, like Credit Suisse, like uh, Santander, Aval, or, or um, IBM technological firma. Uh, this, this approach, of course, I have not covered all the character differences, but I can tell you for what I have seen that the future of management is not to have a generic manager. The future of manager is to have the correct role of management defined based on a good platform of management. The platform of management will be 90% of the whole success of management. And the other 10% is how well this platform is used by the group of management roles. It doesn't need to be a manager, let's say, or call a manager. This is the, the second part of the um, webinar. So let's do the poll again to see if something has changed and then we will conclude with the uh, discussion or the last summary or reflection about what this new manager should do. Um, okay, so how can I start the poll again? Let me see a second. Polls, yeah. Relaunch the poll. Okay, so I create again the poll. Please let me know your answers and we will compare the results.
Good. Um, okay, so I'm going to give 10 more seconds to finish those who have not voted yet in the poll. And then we will see the difference of the results. In the meantime, I have shared with you some of the links. I, the whole material will be uh, published in in in, the, in Luxoft, so you can see that. But if you you are very curious about these platform projects, for example, I have put that in the description already. Uh, still 10 people have not voted yet. I think they are not paying attention anymore. Most probable. They fall asleep in the keyboard. <laughs> okay, so let's stop the polling and let's see the results. Okay, so um, so in the poll, we, we can see that for the first question, do you think that the software manager are really needed? Now it has changed uh, in percentage and the option uh, choose is highly needed, not only for admin purposes, but also for project management purposes. And now 71% of the audience thinks that this is the case. So a software manager role is actually needed, which brings uh, answer to our first question, should we fire the manager? Just as simple as that. I think the answer is clear that no. And the second one is, do you think technical team can develop by itself a organized way to communicate, uh, organize a space and achieve the results? I think here now we have uh, two different um, choices. The, the, 50% of the people think that it's not so possible, so with an impact of 30%. And the other 43% of people think that it's highly possible. But no one thinks actually that it's totally possible or totally impossible. So I think this is, the, or I, I want to believe that this is due to the fact that when we start to have this automated, integrated platform for management, this will encourage more the use of a good management role and also the teams to be more organized, self-organized, which is something that, for example, in the manifesto of Scrum is written. That uh, I, th I think actually Scrum, for example, for those that have um, asked in the in the comments, is a, is a perfect example of a knowledge that is out of time. So Scrum is actually very old, but the principles that the Scrum were, was proposing at that time in the 2000s um, was not that important because the technologies were not there. So we were far of automation. We were far of having the impact of software industry as we have now. But I think Scrum actually today is very relevant. So um, in, my, in my personal opinion is that when we have these platforms um, in place, this management platform in place, it will improve a lot the efficiency of teams based on Scrum because with the Scrum or, or I don't know, um, control panels as Kanban or, or Scrum Kanban or something like that will be highly affected or positively affected by a good software management platform. Okay. Um, let's see if we have more questions. We are just finishing now. So the, the conclusion for the webinar from my side is that we should not have a generic manager. We should have a role that is super manager, but the super manager could be a set of people that is more focused with the industry. So it's actually technically uh, knowledge, so literate. It cannot be as in the past uh, so generic, like a typical manager, because now, it needs to understand the results of the project management tool, of the 
platform. If the platform is telling to this manager, uh, the, the, I don't know, the continuous delivery system is failing 23%, or this microservice configuration is doing this, or um, the artificial intelligence uh, library is giving this uh, success rate or the probability. If the platform is giving a lot of data, but the manager is not in the industry, then a lot of the value of the platform will be lost. That's why this super manager, or software manager should be actually in our industry, should be someone who has the knowledge. Again, as the coach, does not need to be a player, but it has to understand the, the game. So if you check, for example, the most important coaches in football were not that good as players or not the best players in the world, but they changed or transformed their teams. So what I'm saying here is that the software manager should understand the software industry, but should not need to be a super techie person. Uh, just need to understand this uh, terminology, this uh, way to create the industry, uh, how to manage the platform, and the most important should have this commitment instead of only involvement. So it should be able to sacrifice for the team, not being bossy and think that the team is a piece of replaceable slaves, but more like servant leadership as in Scrum is presented. Um, that's all from my side.